Welcome to St. Dominic's for the celebration of the third Sunday of Lent. Greetings to everyone, wherever you may be. As we are in the third Sunday of Lent, let us draw ourselves closer to Jesus and ask His grace to spend the left Lenten days meditating upon His love, His mercy, and His forgiveness in order to receive more grace and blessings for ourselves, for our parish, and for our families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This holy mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Anne and Joseph Bater. Mr. and Mrs. Chesney. Laura Krajewski, Connie Crump, mother of Clara Kisser, and Hogo Antonio Dyes. Remember them in a special way and pray for these souls. Almighty God, grant these souls eternal rest. May their souls rest in peace. Amen. Acknowledge our sins and see God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving has shown us a remedy of, for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me 
but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord, your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the St. Paul's letter to 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Glory to you. Jesus. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and does, and the money changers seated at their tables, making a whip of cords. He drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume you, me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then they then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing, but Jesus on his path would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about human nature, for he himself knew what was within the human person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have the picture of Laura Krajewski, whose second death anniversary. We offer special prayers for the repose of her soul and for the family to comfort and consolation for Stan, Connie, Dan, her friends, Alex, and all the our parish members. She was part of our family. Brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, today's gospel depicts Christ holding a whip in his hand, tables all turned, turned over, expelling people from the temple. This isn't the way we picture Jesus usually, do we? No. There can be the danger sometimes, brothers and sisters, that we begin to think that to make our faith a bit one-sided. Thinking of Jesus simply as a nice man. And Christianity is just about being nice to people. But it isn't. Today we hear Jesus had complete disregard for what people were doing. Tables turned over, money thrown all over the floor, and he effectively said to them, you have no right to be here, so get out. This shows Jesus is telling us the importance of the place where he lives, where God lives. Our churches are the place where God is truly present. So it is not a place we come and spend time in gossiping. 
discussing hidden agendas or talking ill about others, Jesus wouldn't like that. It would be like making a mockery of Jesus, being before his presence and letting Satan to take control of our lives. You see, church is the body of Christ, a sacred place, brothers and sisters. What we have in our churches vastly exceed the Jewish temple. You know, Jews believed that in their most holy place of their temple, God's very presence was there, making it holy. But in our churches and in our chapels, we have that presence of Jesus even more fuller way in the tabernacle. This is the place, brothers and sisters, we call it tabernacle. Here, Jesus not only dwells here, but Jesus is truly present here, brothers and sisters, not only with his divinity, with his body, blood, and soul too. The Jews were supposed to regard their temple with, in such high regard, how much more regard should we have for the presence of Christ in our churches? Remember this, brothers and sisters. Remember, I'm not pushing it on to you. This is what makes us holy. This is what makes us sacred. This is what makes us, gives us a glimpse of the divine and makes us divine. When we, when we enter into a church, it never should be a matter of indifference to us that Christ is present here. It's why when we enter the church, we should genuflect with our knees touching the floor and in reverence to the mighty God who lives here in the church. For those of us who, because of our age or because of our other physical injuries, making it impossible, a, small, a smaller genuflection or bow of a head might be all we can do. But remember, brothers and sisters, if we can do so, we, sh we can do a full genuflection, we should do so because the Lord is the worth the effort. Remember, the Lord is worth the effort. There is more to it. That is not enough. There is more to it than mere external ceremony. You know, we, when we genuflect, we have our hearts as to be put into as well. Yes, the great liturgist Romano Gardini, he said, on entering into the church or passing by the altar or a tabernacle, kneel down all the way without any haste or hurry. And putting your heart into it in what you do, and with your whole attitude say, thou art mighty God, beautiful. Kneel down all the way, putting your heart in what you do, and with your whole attitude say, thou art mighty God. Then, of course, while upon entering the pew, it is right, it's, it's only right to spend the time in prayer before the presence of the Lord, in intimate conversation with the Lord, as a way of preparing ourselves for the celebration of the Mass. 
going back to Jesus cleansing the temple also can be a, another meaning. You see, temple is being used as a place for selling and buying and exchanging money also can be a symbolic of the human soul. Brothers and sisters, our soul should be the place of the worship of God. That is why the Bible says our hearts are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Our soul should be the place of the worship of God. Rather, God finds instead the work of the idol, idolatry and of money. You know, the problem of sin is, brothers and sisters, that we are seeking satisfaction in the wrong things. Our hearts ultimately craving, earning, or longing for the Lord, presence of the Lord. But, you know, we fill them with junk instead. Yes. Christ's death is for the purification and the cleansing of our hearts. But, you see, we just take it for granted and do things the way that we like it. Brothers and sisters, yes, Christ wants to save us and he wants to bring newness in our life. That is the reason we have this beautiful season of Lent that makes us more holy, draws us closer to Jesus, helps us to let know all those sacred things that are at our use to make, for making us more sacred, more holy, giving us a divine glimpse of his presence. Let us acknowledge his presence. No matter wherever you are, whichever church you are in, consider that place as a sacred place. That is why Jesus says, if you are here with any other intentions, with any other hidden agendas, this is a not a place for you. You have no right to be here, so get out. Jesus addressed those people, people of, at that his time, in such harsh words. But Jesus understands us. He accepts us. In spite of our weaknesses, our shortcomings, our limitations. And he comes closer to us. Don't send him away. Don't chase him, brothers and sisters, by giving room to the devil, who is always beside us to defend us on behalf of our weaknesses. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge the presence of Jesus in our churches, in the places of worship, as we are dealing with this pandemic and every, praying ever, every day so that churches might be open to come and worship as a family of faith, to, give him, to render him praise and worship with one heart and mind. Let us ask Jesus, Jesus, give us this, that little bit of grace. Consider your place the, uh, you, uh, as a sacred place, your dwelling, your everlasting presence here, so that we may be touched and in and through us, your presence may be radiated, reflected, not only in this building, in this church, outside, and in our society, in our neighborhood. People may come to acknowledge you alone are the Lord and Savior. Yes, Jesus, purify our hearts. Purify our minds, for they are the temples of the Holy Spirit. You see, the gospel passage ends with, the, instead of ending with the scene in the temple, that is verse 22, three more verses have been included to show that Jesus can read our hearts. Don't think Jesus' anger at sin applies just those people in the temple, watch out. Jesus can read yours and mine hearts as well. Pray to God so that we may be vigilant, we may be alert for his presence and have that longing 
and craving so that we may spend this Lenten season in a fruitful way, making our churches, making our families, making of our neighborhood more holier, more dwelling presence of Christ. Amen. of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended into hell, on the third day rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there come to judge the living and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring before the Lord our prayers in these petitions. For the whole church, that all who follow Christ may be a source of encouragement and strength for those seeking conversion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing to receive the sacraments, that they may be fully open to God's grace and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governments and legislatures, that they may work to establish and protect the dignity and equality of women in society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all God's people, that we will have the strength to be faithful to his commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, that for each one of us, this time of Lent may be a time of deepening conversion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering, lonely, especially those whose names are placed on our altar, that the Lord will bring healing to the sick, comfort to the dying, conversion to sinners, and light to those experiencing darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Anne and Joseph Beta, Mr. and Mrs. Chesney, Laura, Laura Krievsky, Connie Crump, mother of Clara Kisser, Hugo Antonio Dias, Natalie Bozo, Peter Siviero, Mario Misore, Pietro Rosato, and Jeffrey Lafradi. May rest in peace with all the angels and saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Pray in silence for our personal intentions. God our Father, in charity, fasting, and prayer, you have shown us a remedy for sin. Listen in love to our prayers and lift up our hearts with the assurance of your mercy. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care of to forgive our neighbor. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. For these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Lord, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be cohesed to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, Amen, Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the power and, and the glory, glory are yours, yours yeah. now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only through the word my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things at hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray unto the prince of the heavenly host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl to the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Prayer to St. Joseph. There's a sheet over there in the front pew. Let's all begin together. To you, to you O blessed, blessed Joseph, Joseph, do we do come, come in our, our afflictions, and having, and having implored the help, the help of your, your most holy, holy spouse, spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. 
through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus. We humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O our most mighty protector, be kind to us and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness as once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril. So now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield too each one of us by your constant protection so that supported by your example and your aid we may be able to live piously, to die in holiness and to attain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Saint Joseph, dear people of God, thank you very much for all your support and cooperation as we are eagerly waiting and praying for the churches to reopen. Yes, uh, the Cardinal has already advised us to lodge a written petition to our respective MPs. Please, I have posted it on the website. Please do that so that our voice may be heard. While the non-essential retail work, retail shops could be open, why not the churches? Let us humbly do what we can, and God would certainly do the rest. Thank you for all that support, all positive thinking about your church and your, about your spiritual life. And um, once again, uh, letting you know, 2020 tax receipts are ready. Uh, as I said, we are emailing it to you. In case you don't have one, please call, call, call the office or update it, or you may go and uh, come and collect it from here. Also, 2021 envelopes are ready for pickup at the entrance of the church. The church will remain open for private prayers only on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. So you are welcome, but at the, at the same time, please keep all those social, uh, social distancing protocol in your mind. Only 10 people can be in the church at a time. Our children, First Holy Communion children, are preparing for the, their First Holy Communion along with their parents, and they are getting ready for their first reconciliation, which we will be having on March 20th here in the church. Please pray for these children and their parents, and also all those who are preparing other sacraments. As we know, our front, uh, the stairs, I have mentioned it quite a couple of months ago, it's cracked, and we need to do some repairs, and we are going, uh, putting our hands into it soon. So please pray we may be able to do it in a proper way, with the, above all, by the grace of God, so that we may fix it properly and make it a place for people to come in without any fear, without any uh, hesitation, so that God's name may be praised all the time. Let us worship, not only worship Him with our lips, but our hearts as well. As Isaiah says, let us not worship the Lord with your lip alone, but your heart should be into it. Thank you once again for all your support. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, uh, Brian. Nice to see you after a long time. Thank you, Larissa, Freddy, uh, uh, Farrell, uh, and all those who are atten attending the Mass. Thank you. And let us keep, to, uh, keep praying for each other and remain blessed and become blessings for others. And our Blessed Mother, keep interceding for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ 